Welcome to another session of Dentistry and Me. Today I'll be speaking about the topic Intraoral Radiographic Anatomy in the Maxillary Anatomy or the Radiographic Anatomy Landmarks that you see in the Maxillary Anatomy. Why is it necessary to appreciate these structures of these landmarks? It's just simple to identify any variations or any pathology that has been affecting these landmarks. So it's highly easy as an appreciable to differentiate between the normal from that of the pathological conditions. Tooth, as you may know, we have enamel, dentin, and the pulp. Today, in this topic, we'll be speaking about two terminologies as the radiolucency and the radio opacity. In radiolucency is nothing other than these darker areas that you may see here, and radio opacity is found to be this whiter areas that you see opaque areas. So in this you can see that the enamel which is have highly mineralized around 90 percent mineralization is seen so that is where you see more radio opacity. Then you have your dentin which is around 70 percent of mineralization that is where you are able to differentiate from that of enamel. Then you have the pulp which is a soft tissue which carries your blood vessels and your nerve innovations there you might see a radio lucency. This is your pelvic canal space, your radicular pulp, and this is your coronal pulp. Then you have your cemento enamel junction that is located over here. Cementum is not that appreciated in your radiographs because it's far to be lesser mineralized than compared to that of your dentin. So that is why you don't appreciate much of your cementum in the radiograph. It's only you can demarcate the cemento enamel junction that is located here. These arrows that are pointed out here is nothing other than the cervical burnout. It is nothing, it's like a normal configuration that you see sometimes in some radiographs. When you see then the cervical area, you might see this kind of a decreased x ray absorption that is seen between the alveolar crust and that of your cervical region of the tooth. So, how to differentiate that from your tooth caries or your cervical caries? is by seeing the outline. As you may see here the outline is found to be normal. There is no disruption in that outline. So that is why this is considered to be a cervical burnout. Not that but your caries lesion. Next we have your alveolar bone wherein you have your alveolar bone proper, cortical bone and the cancellous bone. In your alveolar crust First and foremost that you should know about alveolar crust is nothing other than a radio opaque line that you see a flat line that is seen between the two adjacent teeth. That I've been pointing out here. This is your alveolar crust. Why do we need to know about this alveolar crust is that you can differentiate a condition called as the pathological condition called as a periodontitis based on the level of the alveolar crust. So you can detect your bone loss in such cases when there is a receding person bone loss you might say that there is periodontitis condition. How do you appreciate that? It's just that the alveolar crust is said to be not more than 1.5 mm from that of your cemento enamel junction. If it is more than that then definitely you might see that there is a receding of the alveolar bone levels that you can con uh, consider it as a bone loss and it is indicative of your periodontitis condition. Next is your lamina dura. This has a lot of significance or clinical significance in most of the cases, especially in your periapical lesions and your other cystic conditions and all. In your lamina dura, the other name is hard layer. It's so called because of its radiographic appearance. There's nothing than the radio opaque outline that you might see here which is extending from your alveolar crest around the periapex and then going on to the other side. So between this radio opaque outline and to your pulp you can sorry to the dentin you will see a radio lucent outline over here. This is nothing other than your periodontal ligament space. Periodontal ligament space contains your principal fibers and your periodontal ligament fibers. So that is why it seemed to be Radial lucent. Then 
you have your particle bone and the cancellous bone in your cancellous bone you have your bony tubercular or the other name for cancellous bone is a bony tubercular bone spongiosa is it also because you have some kind of radio opaque other rods and plates that are seen with some narrow spaces so you see here a linear kind of a radio opaque outline then between that you have some radio lucency or a circular kind of a small narrow spaces so this is what a cancellous bone is about and this is how to differentiate from that of the each uh, that is from your anterior maxilla anterior mandible that of the posterior maxilla and the mandible and here you can see that in your posterior and in your anterior mandible you will see it it's found some more denser kind of trabecular patterns then compared to that of your maxilla you might see it more sparse fine it's fairer than grainy like that you see in your posterior maxilla in the marrow spaces in the posterior aspect when compared to your anterior you might see that marrow spaces are found to be more larger than that of your anterior moving on to the structures the anatomical landmarks that you see in the maxilla we will divide this from each aspect that is each region that is your incisor Axillary incisor region, what all are the anatomical landmarks that you see under the axillary incisor region? First, the incisive foramen. When you've taken a skull view, that is, you must have studied in osteology classes, in the palatal aspect, you have your tears in between the two central incisors, there is in a midline one structure wherein you might see a depression. The depression that is seen it is in this suture line. This suture line is nothing other than your median palatin suture or the intermaxillary suture which is extending from your alveolar crust which was posteriorly. Okay. So it posteriorly extends to your heart palate. And here you can see a depression. This is nothing other than an incisive foramen. In here the radiograph you will see it as a radiolucent outline but sometimes you might see an ill-defined or a well-defined radiopic outline surrounding it it's seen on the either side or bilaterally to that of your main palatine suture that is within the uh, some middle third to the apex region of your central incisors the roots of the central incisors Next in the skull view, as I said, already explained to you what is a medium palatal suture. And then a suture line that you see extending from your alveolar crest. Posteriorly, it extends to your heart palate. You might see this in your radiograph as a radiolucent outline or radiolucent line that is seen extending from the alveolar crest level. It goes till your anterior nasal spine. You can see the radiolucent outline. Next, in the skull view, when you see a nasal fossa, facial aspect, you might see it here. That is lying in the midline, either side of the midline of your central incisors, above the apices of your root apices of the central incisors. It's considered the other name also in white and fair, it's given as nasal aperture or the air cap because it's an air filled cavity. You can call it as nasal fossa too. So you can see a radiolucent hollow structures that are seen bilaterally or laterally to the midline of your this is nasal septum. This is this radio peak structure that you see is a nasal septum. So the radio peak line that you see posterior to the anterior nasal spine. This is your anterior nasal spine posterior to that. Is your nasal septum then what you see here is an inferior conquer in this curve view that you see in facial from facial point of view 
you can see here kind of this is like a mucous membrane that is covering that of your inferior complex so you can see it as a more like a homogeneous radio big mass like that is seen posterior to your nasal aperture or your nasal cavity then you have your superior foramen of the nasal palatine canals wherein you find your nasal palatine vessels and your nerves innervated through these canals it is found to be located superiorly to that of your incisive foramen so here is your nasal fossa just about that you will see either side is your superior foramen which is a radiolucid structure Always remember the hollow structures or air filled cavities are mostly radiolucent areas. Then we have your anterior nasal spine, which is found to be 1.5 to 2 centimeters above the um, your alveolar crust level from that of your between the central incisors it is being located. So this is a radio opaque B like shaped structure that you see your anterior nasal spine and sometimes in some radiographs you might see this kind of a homogeneous kind of an outline radio pick outline over here you can see here there's nothing other than your nasal nose itself that is your soft tissue of the nose this is soft tissue of the nose this is the soft tissue of your lip you can see here and it's a green green arrows that have been dipped. now to summarize your maxillaries um, incisor region what all are the structures that you see you can see here the a part this is your radio opaque line that is seen posterior to that of your or superior to, sorry superior to that of your anterior nasal spine is the nasal septum it's b that you see a homogeneous radiopic mass like this is your inferior conca and then this is your radiolucent um, well defined radiolucent ovoid uh, structures that you see bilaterally or liaison to that of your medium palatine suture is your incisive or This is your anterior nasal spine and you see here the b-shaped structure this is your inferior concha the b that has been pointed out a is the nasal septum and these red arrows are on being marked is your soft tissue shadow of your lip what is this red pointed or mark that you see as i said there is a clinical significance that you might notice with your lamina dura. Do you notice that the lamina dura in this structure has been disrupted or it's going to be discontinuous? And then you can see a kind of uh, radiopic mass over here. It's already a uh, RC treated tooth. So it's kind of a lesion that you see here. So I'll be explaining it to the next chapters as a pulp and periapicalations and that I'll further speak about this. But nothing other than a periapicalation that you see here. Okay. Might be also another differential diagnosis you can give is a periapical scar too. Because already you can see that the it's been RC treated. You can see that the differential diagnosis of a periapical lesion or a periapical scar. Moving on to the maxillary canine region. The maxillary canine region, the facial aspect of human skull, you can see a depression that is seen between your lateral incisors with that of your maxillary canines. You can see that a depression between the roots of these two structures. When seen in the reading graph, you can see that is a radiolucent structure that is seen here. It's an oval shaped or an oblong shaped that is seen between the uh, roots of your lateral incisor and that of your canine. This is one of the favorite questions that are asked by certain uh, viva 
notes for it also for your short notes too this is called as y inverted y line of ns ns the spelling e double n i s this is the structure that is being formed by two the different landmarks that is your floor of the nasal cavity or the nasal aperture and the anterior border of your maxillary sinus please remember this blue outline the blue marked uh, sorry the blue marked arrow is pointing out towards the anterior border of the maxillary sinus and this is not the anterior floor of the maxillary sinus floor of the maxillary sinus is seen in your posterior teeth and especially near the apices of your or above the apices of your what is it, maxillary molars or the premolars here in the canine region you will see that the inverted wine line of venice is being formed by the floor of the nasal cavity and the anterior border of your maxillary sinus then you see one structure that is a radiolucent sorry radio opaque uh, homogeneous radio opaque uh, mass that is seen here this is nothing other than your soft tissue sh shadow of the nose the red mark that you see here that oblique and radio opaque outline that you see is your nasolabial fold and summarizing the structures that you see in your maxillary canine is your floor of the nasal cavity then you have your anterior border of your maxillary sinus then you see that you see here the oblong or the radiolucent structure that you see between the roots of your lateral incisor and your canine is your lateral fossa this is just a diagrammatic representation which i've already explained previously what are the structures that you see in your maxillary cuspids In this you can see that sometimes in the anterior border of the max tree sinus you can see that it might pass, pass across your peri apex of the max tree canine but sometimes it can be encircled over the peri apex so always try to how to differentiate it from the pathology is by seeing the previous and the minor dura appreciating your the minor dura how is it whether it is continuous or whether it is discontinuous then you can notice that there's any pathology of any is any kind of uh, variations that are seen into these into the normal structures in this one you can see that the white arrows that are pointing out is your floor of the nasal cavity then there is an maxillary sinus this is your anterior border of the maxillary sinus now next is the structures that you see in the maxillary molar region favorite question to be asked is the maxillary sinus maxillary sinus as you have already studied in your anatomy in the gross anatomy you have a, it's a pyramidal structure an air filled cavity that you see in and on the posterior maxillary posterior area so it's found to be the one of the largest paranasal sinuses that you see in your uh, in skull and here you can appreciate that this is where the maxillary sinus is located and this you can see that when Nelson take a radiograph you can see this is the floor of your maxillary sinus as I previously mentioned you can see that here it's passing across your periapexes periapices of your roots of maxillary molars you can see a radio big line and then the arrow that has been pointed out here is the septa. Septa is nothing other than a radio big line that is found to be running across vertically from the floor of the maxillary sinus. This septa, what it does is that it helps to divide or it helps to form compartments within your maxillary sinus. So sometimes as age progresses or if you see any missing tooth what happens is that the floor of the maxillary sinus tries to move inferiorly towards the alveolar crest level so you can see here there's a missing tooth wherein there is spontic below that you can see the floor of the 
maxillary sinus that is almost reached in the alveolar crest of the and this red arrows that have been pointed out is your radiolucent outline that is seen you can see here with the radiolucent uh, structure with an uh, radio opaque lines between them okay there's nothing other than your neurovascular canals wherein it supplies your uh, posterior superior alveolar nerve canals and nerves as well as other superior alveolar vessels and nerves you can see that it's passing across the maxillary sinus so remember that this is your radiolucent structure the maxillary sinus the radiopaque line that you see here is your floor of the maxillary sinus then this is your neurovascular canal next is the zygomatic process of the lymphoma as you know the zygomatic arch is found to be laterally present it extends laterally from your maxilla so you might see that it's as in it uh, as in it's formed by the zygomatic process of your temporal bone and then the zygomatic the zygoma or the uh, in, malar bone also it comprises that of your zygomatic arch so what do you see here in the radiograph you can see that it's found to be a u-shaped u-shaped or a j-shaped radio opaque structure that you see here is your zygomatic process of the maxilla the black surface that you see here is a zygoma okay so as i said this is your mala bone mala bone your zygoma that when once you're taking a radiograph you'll see this as a j or a u-shaped radio opaque line is seen above the floor of the maxillary sinus this is your zygomatic process of the maxilla next is the maxillary tuberosity you see it as a uh, radiopic mass that is seen posterior to that of your third molars wherein you can see the sparse trabeculations that are seen here see the radio trabeculations that are seen here this is your maxillary tuberosity so posterior to the maxillary tuberosity you have a structure called as a pterygoid plates that is located here wherein the attachment for your medial pterygoid muscle is your pterygoid plates the pink shaped arrow that you see here and then inferior to this pterygoid plate is your hamula pro process a projection of the hamula process that you see here when taken in the radiograph you can see here as a homogeneous radiopaque mass and the same posteriorly located to that of your maxillary tuberosity this is your maxillary tuberosity here is your pterygoid plate and inferior to the pterygoid plate is your one another homogeneous structure that you see here a kind of a uh, projection that is seen here is the amular process then most commonly seen one of the mandible structure okay part of the mandible that is seen in your maxillary posterior region especially when you're taking a third molar uh, maxillary third molar's uh, radiograph you see this kind of a homogeneous radiopic triangular shaped mass that is seen here inferior to your uh, third molars maxillary third molars you may see a coronoid process of the mandible so this is mostly seen because when you are asking the patient to open their mouth wide open this coronoid process normally what happens is that the coronoid process tries to move forward and downwards so when it moves forward and down while the patient is opening their mouth when you try to take a radiograph of the maxillary molars you will see this kind of a radio pic uh, triangular shaped projection that is seen here this is the coronary process of your mandible now to summarize in a diagrammatic representation of all the structures that you see in the maxillary molars 
this is your maxillary tuberosity that is seen to be located posterior to that of your um, maxillary third molars then you have your coronoid process of the mandible and a volume mentioned then posterior to that of your maxillary tuberosity you have your pterygoid plate which is found to be a radio opaque uh, then structure and then just inferior to the radio opaque structure of your pterygoid plate is your another projection that you see is a hamular process then you have the floor of your maxillary sinus which runs through the periapices or the, the roots of your maxillary molars then just above that you might see a j-shaped or a u-shaped radio opaque outline it's nothing other than your zygomatic process of the maxilla so to summarize we have spoken about the anatomical landmarks that you see in your maxilla that is the maxillary incisor region then we came on to the maxillary cuspids that is your canines the structures that you see there is your um, lateral fossa you see the um, inverted byline of ns in the maxillary canine region sometimes you see the soft tissue shadow of the nose as well as the nasolabial fold then we moved on to your maxillary posterior region wherein you see the maxillary sinus the zygomatic process of the maxilla the maxillary tuberosity amylar process and the pterygoid plates